Bob is named Big Bob in to everyone. Um, Florida, <laughs> no one's feeling quite like him. Um, so yeah, this is just a small snapshot of some of the projects that I've worked on this year. Um, and ISUD has definitely been a highlight of that, being awarded membership into the organisation. But on reflection, I think what all of the projects have in common is that they all explore various social issues and um, try to really unpick how design can um, sort of impact the world positively and the people in it. Um, but one area that I was really interested in was gender-based issues. Um, so I decided to sort of really explore this for my kind of project what I'll be talking to you about today. Um, as most of you know, gender issues is, is just everywhere. It's in the media, in the news constantly. Um, and I think that's part of the reason I wanted to dig into it a little bit deeper. So this is just a really quick Google search on some articles and news headlines and um, just on the multitude of gender issues that are currently being discussed. And this is really just a tiny snapshot of what can be found. Um, but what I think is really interesting is that it's an issue that not only impacts me directly, but impacts every person in this room. Um, and yeah, that's, I thought, right, let's give it a good go and see what we can do. But I wanted to dig into it a little bit deeper than just what's can be found on the surface and get into the psychology behind gender and the issues associated with it. Um, and from this I came across a term called unconscious bias. Now unconscious biases um, are learned stereotypes um, and these stereotypes become embedded within us and as a result actually influence the way we treat other people. I'm sure no one in this room would consciously say that they would treat a person differently purely based on their gender, but the more that we're the more that we see these stereotypes day to day, it influences our behaviour and we actually do treat others differently. Um, so from all the research I took on this understanding, I decided to take a step back and just to actually look around and see where these stereotypes could actually be found in day to day life. Um, so I started looking at shops and supermarkets and became really interested in the packaging for products targeting women and targeting men. And this is just a really small collection of images um, of products that you can find foods and test them wherever. Um, but immediately you can really see the striking contrast within the designs. And I think this image really sums it up quite well. It's from the same brand, but one product for men and one product for women. Um, you know, immediately the colour difference and the colour choices reveal it, but even the shape of the packaging really enforces these stereotypes. But digging a little bit deeper into that, um, I said the typeface that we use. And as you can see in the male product, the typeface is much bolder, it's bigger, and it's all in capital letters, compared to the female product, which is a lot smaller, it feels a lot lighter, and it's all in lowercase letters. Um, being a bit of a type enthusiast, it really caught my attention and really pricked my interest. And I thought to myself, I will design a typeface, because as you do, why not? Um, but I wanted to get to know some of the characteristics that could help define what makes masculine and feminine typefaces. So things such as using bold weights against light weights, the use of serif fonts, particularly slab serifs, and most commonly for female typefaces, the use of script-based fonts. So combining all of this together, um, I wanted my design to really embed these stereotypes and using these sort of characteristics, um, I wanted to really push what the design could say. Now, I've obviously spoken a lot about gender stereotypes, but I haven't actually said what they even are. Um, so, from doing research, I put a list together of keywords and adjectives um, of words that describe, so describe what each gender entails. And I haven't listed which list is for male and female, but I'm pretty confident everyone in this room can tell which is which purely based on the colour choice and the words that have been used. So from the list, I picked out a few of the keywords um, because they were the most reoccurring and seemed to be the ones that just kept popping up in my research. And as I wanted to design a typeface, I thought actually these words would help shape the personality of what the design would be. Um, and what it turned out to be a really good starting point and helped me to sort of give direction for the design work itself. So a lot of trial and error, a lot of development work, by a sound was finally born. It is a font family and it's made of three weights, gender neutral, feminine and masculine. So looking at the weights in a little more detail, I started with gender neutral, 
um, as that sort of gave the foundation of the design that Masculine Feminine could sort of be built from. Um, as you can see, it's a sound Sarah this type, and I didn't want it to have any particular characteristics that could allow it to be associated with any particular gender. Um, from this, feminine was created. Um, as you can see, the strokes are much thinner, giving it a much lighter feel on the page. It is a serif design, and the serifs themselves are quite sharp, which is unusual to see. But I wanted it to feel really petite, um, delicate, and just generally very slender. And finally, I created masculine. Um, the strokes are much thicker, it is generally much bolder, and feels heavier on the page. It's again a serif based design, but I leave slab serifs because I feel it really reinforces that the weight that it has and generally makes it feel much stronger, much more confident on the page itself. So when you put them together, you can see the real contrast between each of them. Um, obviously, I've said I've included gender neutral into the design, but I haven't really discussed this, but I thought it was really important to include it because, as we know, gender is a spectrum and we all align ourselves somewhere along that spectrum with masculine and feminine sitting either side. Um, but what's also important to note, I think, is how detrimental these stereotypes can be to individuals. Statistics show that women are less likely to have access to senior positions in the workplace. In the creative industries alone, only 11% of women are creative directors. But for men, suicide is the biggest killer under the age of 45. And these are clearly statistics that need to change, but until we um, acknowledge the influence of stereotypes, this change isn't going to come quick enough. Now, I'm not at all tempted to attack designers and creatives, I promise. We all make design decisions that we feel best answer the brief at hand. But I can't help to notice there's a clear relationship here between the two, and there is a correlation that can be seen. But I think what this also demonstrates that as designers and creatives, we all have a responsibility um, for the work that we put out there. This isn't something to be afraid of. Um, I think instead it's something to be mindful of. <laughs> Uh, the work that we put out there, as you all probably know, can have such a drastic impact on the world itself and the people in it. Um, and I just think that's something to take in mind when creating work um, for when you put it out there. So what I'd like for you all to take away from today is that we're trying to change perceptions regarding gender and stereotypes. But what I'd love most of all is for you all to carry on with these conversations and even debates around the topic because by talking about it, that's how we will eventually remove these stereotypes from society and only then can equality occur for everyone and I think that's something we should all aim for. Um, so what's next to me? Um, I really hope I get to carry on working on projects like this. Um, I really want to carry on working on my type design skills. This has been such a fun project. Thoroughly loved every minute of it. Uh, but I'm also hoping to work in the creative agents, uh, creative industries, in an agency as a designer. Thank you.